Hey, what's up folks? This is the 2022 State of the Office Report Apocalypse Edition Part 2 because the apocalypse is still going on. Now, not a whole lot has changed, but there are a few fun things, uh, one of which is the thing you're currently looking through. I got a new phone. It's a cheap Nokia something or other because I don't spend money on phones, but hopefully the potato cam on it is better than the previous potato cam and you won't feel like throwing up halfway through this video. We'll just march around. We have the yellow North Face backpack that you can bury me with. Now let's talk guitar music stuff because everyone went a little crazy during the apocalypse and I expressed my crazy through guitar pedals. So let's go through the pedal board. Goes into a tuner. And then a noise gate. This is a no-name tuner. This is a TC Electronics Sentry noise gate. And this is a new pedal. This is a uh, Sir Woodshed compressor. Took me a while to figure out how to dial this in properly. It's a different kind of compressor that I'm used to. But boy, is it great. Then an Exotic Effects EP booster for a little bit of opinionated boost. And Earthquaker Devices plumes for a little grit. And then a Wampler Euphoria for a lot of grit. And then a Friedman BOD for this is uh, like the, this is like, uh, it's evil. It is an incorrect amount of gain. But boy, is it fun to play with. Big Muff Pie for the Pink Floyd and the Smashing Pumpkins. Then it goes back up to the noise gate and to a Digitech Jam Man Looper for when I play with myself, which is a lot. And then a TC Electronic. This is a John Pertucci signature. It's like chorus, flanger, and tremolo. I just use it for chorus. And then this is new. And whenever you see the word Strymon, think someone paid too much for a guitar pedal. Because that's what I did. This is the Volante. It is a tape delay with uh, some really nice reverb in it too. And it sounds incredible. Strime is expensive, but I think it might be worth it expensive and not crazy audio snob expensive. Very, very nice. Now this goes out stereo now. And over on the left, goes over to Tone Hinge, most of the time into this Ibanez tube head, which I quite like, and then do a two by 10. Occasionally I'll plug it into the Roland chorus, but not very often. That's the left side and the right side, it goes over here this is a two notes cab m plus and it's like a impulse response cabinet modeler with a power amp and a preamp modeling and all kinds of other stuff it's really like a whole pedal platform thing you could use by itself so it's putting in an impulse response and a power amp modeler and going into this full range flat response powered speaker by headrush so Full stereo rig. I mean, this is this stupid. If you're if you're a hobbyist bedroom player, do not do this. Get yourself just plug in your laptop and get some like neural DSP stuff. This is dumb for a hobbyist player, but it sounds amazing. It sounds so amazing. I'm so happy with it. But it's dumb. Don't do this. All the guitars have stayed the same. I have not gotten a new guitar in an outrageous period of time. This one got new pickups though. Got a DiMarzio Super Distortion. Uh, Super Distortion. These are P90 sized. And a DiMarzio Virtual P90. This sounds amazing. This sounds good. But this is what I play most of the time now. And it's uh, it sounds really good through this rig. But pretty much everything I've tried sounds good through this rig. Stupid. Stupid. But it sounds amazing. Everything over here is the same. I got my old check email from work iPad. On the desktop, some things have changed. Got some new mice. This is a Logitech trackball. This is for my general work and productivity. And I've got like a regular mouse for gaming. And this is like a Red Dragon something or another. They're fairly inexpensive, uh, but they're really nice, really nice mice. And they fit my hand well. I have I have 
large hands for a woman. Now, this keyboard, I am, well, I guess I got two keyboards here. This one is my first really custom keyboard. I got a like $45 mechanical keyboard as a mod platform and basically stripped everything out of it, put in as hot swappable switches. So I put in new switches and new keycaps and I painted the cover. I'll do a whole blog post on this for the none of you that are interested, but God, this is by far my favorite keyboard ever. And I have like eight mechanical keyboards now, maybe more. I probably chucked some at some point. It's, it's so good. And I got this little guy. This is a basically a USB media control. So it's a volume control and you can press on it to mute and it has a play, pause and forward buttons. When you get compact keyboards like this, like a 10 keyless or a 65% or something, you're generally not going to get media keys and you don't want to be that person that's holding down a function key and doing some calisthenics to turn your sound up and down. This is really handy. You can get these on Amazon fairly cheap. This is a nicer one, but if you just want like a volume mute control, those are like 20 bucks. They're nice. Up here, I got this little mini, mini lab from Arcturia because going all the way over there to that keyboard, then I'd want to see some music or something. I'd have to like go all the way back over here and go all the way back over there. And just to fiddle around and learn some stuff, having this here, pretty awesome. And these little tiny ones are, are fairly cheap. One thing I had last time I forgot to mention is I put this hole in my desk so I could stop running wires all across my desk like an animal. And I found through accident at the time is they make these little USB inserts for these. So it can do the cords, but I also have two USB ports here. And that's really handy for like uh, plugging in a thumb drive or plugging in a, a Wacom tablet or whatever little thing you, USB thing you have to plug in. Very handy. The only other thing that's changed, you really can't see either, but it's in, it's in the dark tower here. I got an AMD RX 50 or AMD 5600X new CPU. It's like a six core, 12 thread beast. Got a new motherboard for it that supports PCIe 4. And I am super happy with it. I mean, the kind of, I had like the first gen, I had like a, uh, 1600 or something like that. 5600X is like uh, much faster. You don't really notice it on day-to-day -day stuff, but if like you're gaming or you're doing some video encoding or something heavy, it's just much faster. I'm still rocking uh, AMD RX 580 for the graphics. Probably will be until the graphics card market gets less crazy, but with AMD's FSR, which is like an upscaling technology that runs great on Linux, by the way, if you're using like a glorious egg roll Proton build, runs great on Linux. And I can set the game to 1080p and it upscales it to 1440p, and I can't tell the difference. And it's an old RX 580 will do 1080p gaming all day long. So very happy with that, and that isn't changing anytime soon. That is the state of the office, Apocalypse Edition Part 2. I hope everybody is staying healthy and happy and uh, just getting through it. And I hope 2022 uh, improves over 2021 because it would be hard to imagine that it wouldn't. Anyway, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.